In this tutorial, I'm going to show you three quick and simple ways to create these anime style speed lines. Each one of the three has a slightly different look and effect, so make sure you stick around to watch all three techniques so you know which one you'd like to use in your own projects. Right, so we're going to start with this one on the left. So if I just stop this and create a new composition, so I'll call this example one. I'm going to make my composition square, but you can have yours any size you want. Background color doesn't matter at this stage. OK. And I'm just going to create a new solid. And this is our background, so this is going to be black. Let's call this background. OK. And then let's, on top of that, create another solid. And this would be our lines. So I want our lines to be white, so I'm going to make our solid white. Call it lines. OK again. And in our effects and presets, we're going to search for CC Starburst. And there it is. So let's drag this onto our white solid, our lines. If I just play this through, you'll see that it is lots of balls or dots with a camera zooming through them in Z space, in 3D space. And what we're going to do is adjust our scatter. Let's make this 300, just so there's a lot more space between them, they're a lot more scattered. Speed, I want this to be quite a bit more, so let's go with five. Let's play that again. It's quite quick, but I think that's fine. We can always come and adjust that later. Grid spacing, let's up this to around 10. And size, let's bring down to 30, so they're quite small. And let's just play this through, and there we go. So the next step is to add another effect, and that effect is CC Light Burst. So if you search for that, and here it is, I'm going to drag this onto our lines. And if I play this, you'll straight away see that our dots are now elongated, creating lines, sort of uh, light bursts. And we're almost there. So what I'm going to do is up our ray length from 50 to around 200, just so they're a lot longer. And you will notice, and I hope you can see this on your screen, that the longer the ray length, the harder it is to see the lines. But we will fix that in a second. But for now, let's just play this and see how it's looking. That's looking about right. So what we're going to do now, and you can do this in this composition, but I just found that it really slowed down my preview and it seemed to be much quicker when I brought this composition into a new composition and added the next step there. So what I'm going to do is go to our project, get our example one, and bring it into a new composition. And in here, we're going to add matte choker. So search for matte choker, and bring this on. And because we're in a new composition, we need to grab our background layer, turn it off in here, and bring it into our new composition at the bottom. Go back to our layer with the matte choker, and the choke one, rather than 75, we want to bring this right down into the minus, into the negatives. Right about here, that's fine, that's the max we can go, so minus 127. And then I'm going to bring the gray level softness down to zero. And here you are, now they are solid lines. And that's maybe a bit too much, so I'm just going to up the gray level softness to maybe 2%. And that's looking much better. So let's play this through. And there we have it. That is example one. So let's go on to one of the other examples and let's do this one on the right next. And let's create a new composition. Let's call this example two. And this one, we want to make sure that our width and height is bigger than the composition we're going to use this in in the end. So if our final composition is 1080 by 1080, for example, we're going to make this 1500 by 1500. Or whatever your composition is, just add a few hundred onto it, just so it's bigger than our composition. And you will, and you will see why shortly. But for now, let's go 1500 by 1500. Five seconds is fine, okay. And again, I'm going to create a new solid. It doesn't matter what your background color is, but I'm just going to stick with black, okay. And back to our effects and presets. And we're going to search for fractal noise. And bring this onto our layer. And we're going to up our contrast. 
and lower our brightness. So I'm going to bring contrast right up. Actually, I'm going to bring it right up to around about 1,200. Bring the brightness right down to minus 250. And this is kind of what you want it to look like. Uh, mainly black with lots of white splodges. But what we're going to do quickly is our scale on the transform. Scale, untick uniform scaling. So we can scale the width and height separately. And we're going to bring our width right down to around here. So 11, let's go to 14. And then our height, we want this to be really racked up. So let's just bring this right up. So yeah, roughly around there. So that's about 3,600. And to have this animate, we want it to be animating downwards. So we're going to use the offset turbulence and ignore this first number, this second number. We can either keyframe by keyframing, going to the end, and then really racking it up. Or how I prefer to do it, I'll just delete those keyframes holding Alt or Option and clicking the stopwatch next to Offset Turbulence and adding a really simple expression just so you don't have to worry about the keyframes and you can really control the speed at which these move. So we're just going to go X equals and then with this pick whip, we're just going to go to this first number here. Semicolon on the end, new line Y equals time times and this is our speed, so I'm going to really have it quite fast. So 5,000, semicolon, new line, square bracket, x, comma, y. And it should automatically have the end square bracket, but if not, make sure that's added in. Click off, play this through, and you'll see that our lines are moving in a downward motion. So if you want it to go faster or slower, just adjust this number here or on your keyframes, just change the numbers so that it's moving at the speed you want it to. I'm happy with that speed actually, so I'm going to leave it there. Back in our project, we're going to grab our example two and bring it into a new composition. And let's call that example two, render comp, like, like we did the first one, just so we're not confused. And in our render composition for example two, we're going to search for polar coordinates and bring this onto our layer. And rather than polar to rectangle, we want rectangle to polar. And then rank up this top one here, this interpolation, all the way up to 100%. And as you'll see, it doesn't go right to the edge of our composition. It just creates a perfect circle that fits our composition. And this is why we made this composition a lot bigger than our final one. I am just going to go into my composition settings and bring my composition side on this render comp back down to the size I want it to be. Let's play this through. As you can see, all the lines come from the dead center. If you want, like we had in our first example, a sort of hole in the middle, what we can do is go to our example two, where we created our fractal noise. We can create a new solid or a shape layer as long as it's black or the same color as our background. And then we just need to create a mask covering just the very top here. If I just quickly go back to our render comp, you'll see we now have that hole. What we would want to do is feather that mask. So on the mask, let's just rack up that feather just so it's nice and blended rather than that harsh line. Back to our render comp, and there we go. So I might want to move that down a bit. And there we go, that looks good to me. Okay, so let's look at our third and final example, which was this one in the middle here. So again, let's create a new composition. This time it can be the exact size we want. So I'm going to go 1080 by 1080. Example three, okay. And like before, layer new solid. And this is our background layer, okay. And make sure we click off this layer so it's not selected and go up to our pen tool. 
Let's add in our title and action safe so we can see the center of our composition. What we're going to do is just draw, let's zoom out, draw a very simple triangle which goes from the center and it's always best to go from the center to the corner. For example, if you drew it horizontally and then when we add the rotation later on, it will you will see the edge of it as it rotates around. So we want to do the longest point of our composition, which is up in this corner. Okay, and that's about right there. It doesn't have to be perfect, we can adjust this later. And on this shape layer, if we go to the drop down, add, and we want the repeater. And here we go, drop that down. Copies, let's go for about 15. Part we do need to go to the transform and on position, it automatically adds 100 here. We don't want position, so we can change that to a zero. But what we do want is the rotation. So let's just amp up our rotation until it fills a complete circle. That's about there. And now what we can do is back to our shape. We can just move it out from the center if we want that hole, or we can keep it in the center if we want that effect. But I'm just going to move mine out slightly to roughly there. And then we can collapse that. And we're going to add a wiggly transform right near the bottom here. And we want this beneath our repeater. So I'm just going to drag the wiggle beneath our repeater. Drop this down. Wiggles per second. Let's go with 10. And then down to transform. Let's just move the position slightly on both let's play that just so you can see what's happening all that's happening here is that the position on each layer is wiggling independently creating that effect of that zoom and those speed lines let's also add a bit of rotation but not too much so let's go with yeah about 10. let's play that see how that looks it's not too bad at all. I might even add a slight minus 20 on the scale, maybe more. No, that's about fine. So yeah, minus, minus 20 on the scale. You can play with all of these until you have something that you're happy with. It's just a matter of changing the transforms on both the wiggle and the repeater. You can even, if you want, go back to your shape and you can still change the shape of your initial shape layer. So you can have it thicker or thinner. I'm happy with about where we had it, which was uh, roughly there, let's say. And let's just play this through one more time and see how it looks. And that is the final example all finished. I would love to hear in the comments which one is your favorite or if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching.